Hello, this is Dr. Bob Browner with Community Coronavirus Update number 87. Today we'll talk about the fact that we're going back to masks again, but uh, also importantly, when we're going to take them off again, uh, plus some more on immunity variants and mixed messages. Uh, so yesterday the Health Department announced that we will be back to a directive health measure in Lincoln Lancaster County with masks, and Lincoln Public Schools also announced that uh, for Quay through 12 we'd be going out to masks uh, in all our buildings as well. Uh, and so the next few slides is kind of our rationale that we presented at the school board last night. Uh, one of the problems, of course, uh, one week of, of uh, voluntary masking 7 to 12 with vaccination rates and, and uh, people hopefully doing the right thing still, despite all that, uh, over 800 students in exclusion. So unfortunately, the honor system does not work and uh, we do not have sufficient vaccinations uh, to make this a safe thing to do. So it's back to universal masks for all until we get better uh, vaccination rates and lower spread. Some things I would add, too, is that there's a couple other problems, too. Number one is that the hospitals in Nebraska are full. They don't have any excess capacity right now, so we need to slow down this pandemic to give our hospitals a little breather here. Uh, the problem is when you hit hospital capacity, mortality goes up, up not just for coronavirus, but everything else, too. Um, you know, uh, Bryan Hospital did get a few empty ICU beds, but not because of a good problem. It's because six uh, patients with coronavirus died over the weekend, uh, including two men who are local who died in their 40s and 60s. And so we're getting people dying without any uh, actually underlying conditions. These are young, healthy people dying now. Uh, so it looks like uh, Delta is worse uh, than prior variants. And it's also worse for kids. So what we're seeing uh, in Region 4, which is uh, the southeastern part of the United States that has the worst surge right now, uh, that graph on the left, that is only children. And you'll see that the number of children hospitalized, hospitalized is already two to three times higher than the worst of the surge back in January. Uh, and so it appears that this may be worse for children as well. So all of these added effect, uh, you know, we need to do something, we need to do something now. Uh, Lincoln Lancaster County rates uh, of spread based on the CDC threshold criteria for safe schools. Uh, we've been in the red for a few weeks now, and so uh, the problem uh, with that hospitalizations that we're having is those hospitalizations, those are based on the infections that happened two weeks ago, and we have more now. So the hospital situation is going to get worse, not better, over the coming weeks. So it's time to do something. We're sort of in an emergency situation here. Uh, you know, vaccination rates, there, I think there was some hope that we had enough people vaccinated, but we just don't have enough people vaccinated. Even in Lincoln Lancaster County, which has the highest vaccinations of the states, we're still not there. Uh, if we were like in the Northeast with these kind of rates, maybe we could have gotten away with that, but we just don't have enough people vaccinated right now. And especially in the young population, what we're seeing is that not in the teenage and college age populations, we're not even 50% uh, fully vaccinated yet. And so until this number gets much higher, uh, we need to have masks in place. You know, you could argue is why did it take so long to put a mask ordinance in place? We put the first one in here. We didn't take it off till here, till we were down in this level. I think there was uh, some hope that combinations of vaccines plus uh, people be hopefully being honorable might help. Unfortunately, we've proven that that just isn't the case. Delta spreads so much faster than the Wu original Wuhan strain, uh, and people just don't follow uh, recommendations unless they're required in these situations. And so it's mass back to masks uh, for a while. And we'll talk at the end about when I think we could take masks back off, though. However. Uh, and then so we talked a little bit about the two misconceptions out there. There's still those people coming out, even some people with the medical background claiming that masks don't work. They're making a fundamental mistake. Some of the uh, mistake I think Fauci and uh, our Surgeon General at the time made a mistake early on. Vaccines are not solely personal protection. If they were solely personal protection, it could be an individual decision to wear a mask, but that's not the main effect of a mask. The main effect of a mask is source control to decrease spread from the infected person to other people. So there is some personal protective effect of the mask, but the main thing that helps is is that infected person to spew less out into the atmosphere around them. That's why masks have to be a community decision, not, a, not an individual decision. And then most importantly, our, are, our hospitals are full. Uh, so all, all of our public health efforts, they're layered interventions. Very rarely does a public health intervention, including vaccination, control things by itself. It's layers of stuff. And until we get people to realize you can't just pick and choose one thing, you've got to have to do multiple things until we get this thing under control. Uh, and the evidence in masks is, is rock solid at this point. Uh, there's the, the last week at the, at the school board when we talked about a couple of debunked studies and opinion pieces, that's really about all there is against masks. Uh, this uh, uh, summary put out a few weeks ago literally has a two-page bibliography of why masks and things like this work. Uh, the evidence is solid, and it's about 99 to 1 from a medical perspective. Yes, there's a few oddball doctors out there who are against masks, but it, they're the one out of 99. So, and the last thing, of course, is hospitals are full. Uh, and it, it's kind of hard sometimes to explain this to the general public. 
So what I used as an analogy is that uh, last week I had a meeting in Fremont, uh, and on, on that drive to Fremont, I used to drive that uh, drive to Fremont and go to the hospital on weekends 25 years ago, because early in my medical career, I worked at the emergency room here. And I had two of my unhappy firsts uh, in, in, in the Fremont emergency room. Uh, the first of those, you know, you, they train you about how to tell someone that, that their loved one died, and you see it on the TV. It's, it's nothing like that when you have to do it yourself. And the first time I had to tell, uh, I had a woman that died in the ER and I had to go walk to the waiting room and tell her husband that her wife died. That is not an easy discuss, dis, uh, dis, uh, uh, kind of, uh, dis, discussion to have. Um, we had, in, in Brian, that, ha dis, that discussion had happened six times by our local healthcare providers. And most frustrating, those were people who didn't have to die. They could have, those deaths all could have been prevented with a free and, and effective vaccine and an inexpensive and effective mask. All those did not have to happen. The other and happy first was the first time I had a triage scenario. And typically in healthcare, you always take care of who needs it the most first, except when you hit a triage scenario. And triage scenario means we've run out of resources. We've got more sick people than we can handle. Now we have to not provide the best care to everybody because we can't. Uh, and my scenario was we had six kid teenagers roll over in an accident, none of them wearing seat belts, and we had six injured teenagers coming into the ER at once. We were set up for maybe one or two, but we couldn't handle six, and that was a really tough night in the emergency room. We're putting our doctors and nurses in a situation where they have to have those con those conversations that aren't necessary, and we're forcing them into a situation where they can't provide the best care for everybody. I think you have to realize what you're doing to people by not wearing a mask. Um, they're cleaning up the mess. It's time for us to do something about it to prevent it. And I want to say a personal thank you to these five physicians. They showed up last night at the school board meeting. Uh, they all worked uh, long days before they got there. Uh, all the hospitals, the clinics, the urgent care, they're all overwhelmed right now. But these f uh, five physicians showed up and they took the time to explain in personal terms what they're seeing. Uh, and I'll point out, you know, Dr. Kevin Rickmuth, I know he had to actually come in from an out-of-town clinic and swing by the school board to make his testimony. And he points out, you know, he says, I hate this mask, I really do. And honestly, and Ryan said the same thing, I would say the same, I hate wearing masks too. But it's what we have to do to protect our community and those around us. So thanks to all of them for showing up and taking the time out and sitting through lots and lots of testimony and taking their time to put a personal story on this. Because uh, we need more healthcare providers to speak up. Which, you know, a little quirk about doctors, doctors actually really hate the media. They don't like being in front of the camera on this so it takes a lot to talk a doctor into it but they really they showed up and they did what needed to be and said what needed to be said so thank you to all of them uh, and remember each of these on this visual it helps to turn numbers into a visual like this but these are just little images of people these are actual real people in the hospital many of whom are going to die they have families friends children those are hard conversations to have and so it's time to start taking this a little more seriously and knock off the politics uh, and unfortunately, what's happened in healthcare is we have our own state undercutting us. So uh, all the hospitals uh, said that they're going to require vaccines, and here we have the state actually undercutting our own vaccine efforts. Uh, unfortunately, this made both regional and national news today. We need our state to actually be behind us and not cutting off us off at the feet all the time. Nebraska is still the only state that doesn't even release data on this. You can't manage a crisis without good data, and Nebraska is literally hiding the data, which is which is disgraceful. Uh, and here we have uh, Gary Antone, unfortunately, turning down the, the, the health department in Douglas County. It's trying to do the right thing. We need our state to support us and have our back, not be cutting us off at the knees constantly. Um, you know, I'm, I actually, my own personal views, I do swing a little libertarian. However, I am a libertarian to the point where what I, where you or anybody else harms somebody else or costs money to somebody else. If you want to do something, you should do it on your own dime. And I actually think it's kind of cool that Delta actually announced that they're going to charge unvaccinated employees more for health insurance now. Uh, 40, because they've actually seen with their own healthcare costs, average hospital stay for COVID is $40,000. And that's average. So some are a lot more expensive than that. So, you know, okay, fine. If you're going to do this, but you got to pay for it. So I think people who are choosing not to be vaccinated, they need to be the ones bearing the cost of this, not the rest of us. Uh, and I can, I can actually verify this. My day job, I work on uh, uh, health system contracts. Our Medicare contract uh, in Lincoln, Nebraska, actually our cost for coronavirus were four million dollars less than around than the comparable population around the other rest of the around the United States. That's because you know, the Lincoln Lancaster County did put in its own public health measures. We had a lower hospitalization rate and death rate, and that's where most of those those savings came from. We had less people in our of our Medicare population, population sick and in the hospital. It saved Medicare money, and that's just for one small group in Lincoln. So if you're a self insured employer in Lincoln, you also saved money because because our, our community did the right thing for coronavirus. If you're self-insured, every one of those voided hospitalizations saved you guys $40,000 off your bottom lines. So this isn't just a personal thing. This is literally your pocketbook. 
Uh, a couple more things. Uh, Ali Pond gave us a great presentation this morning talking about, about natural infection versus vaccination. Still that big misconception that I had coronavirus six or eight months ago, so now I'm immune, and that is not true. Uh, what we're seeing is that you have a lot more breakthrough infections with the natural infections as opposed to vaccination. Vaccination is much more predictable. It's a higher dosage uh, to your immune system, and so you are much more protected if you're vaccinated versus a natural infection. Uh, and links to this Oxford study, they even studied healthcare providers and showed that those who had uh, mild disease uh, still had a very variable response. Many of them still got infected. And if you have an asymptomatic infection, there was almost no measurable immune response. So it just doesn't do it enough. You do need a vaccine. Uh, and one way to think of it, and it, it may be two components, does, does immunity to, to coronavirus wane over time such that you need it a boost every 6, 12 months, or is it there that's a new strain? And I think it's actually both. And so what happened is if you had that original uh, Wuhan strain back last year, your, your immunity is waning enough and Delta is enough different that you probably don't have much immunity. Uh, and the same thing can be true of the next one. That's why we need to tamp this thing down and not keep letting spread happen. This isn't a one and done and just letting it spread and it will be over. That's not how this works, unfortunately. I wish that were true, but it's not. Um, and the variants, uh, simply, you know, the, the, what again, yet a, the studies sh keep showing that, that the immunity you may have had to the Wuhan strain isn't going to help you with the Alpha, Beta, or Delta variant. So you need a vaccine. Uh, and again, studies even showing uh, post-vaccination, whether you whether you had coronavirus or not, and then whether you got vaccinated, where they were at, the studies are out now really conclusively proving this. So, you know, okay, we're back to masks again. Will we be able to take them off? And the answer is, I would say at some point, yes. And the criteria I would use is kind of like the weather report. When do you wear, when do you wear a raincoat? Well, you wear a raincoat when it's raining. Uh, when do you wear a mask? You wear a mask when cases of spread are out of control, and here they are. I had my mask off through most of June and July and didn't wear it much, even went to the restaurants, uh, started going to the restaurants, but then started going back up again, so I'm now back, back to wearing uh, my mask indoors. So when can we take them off? Well, we can take them off when it's not raining again, just like your raincoat. Uh, so I do think there's some mat metrics for backing off. Uh, number one, hospitals have to have capacity for sick people. I mean, that's that's number one. Even Ricketts apparently thinks that's a criteria with look, we're looking at, although he's ignoring it right now. Hospitals have to have capacity before we start backing off a mask again. We do need redis, reduced community spread, and I would use those CC, CDC criteria because those are objective criteria we can all look at and verify. There's a lack of trust in everything right now, so we want criteria that everybody can see and everybody can run the numbers themselves and verify it. So I think we need to use reduced community spread by that that CDC criteria. We're also going to need sufficient vaccination rates, uh, likely building level uh, if you're in a school, probably in the 70 to 90 percent range. I don't know what that number is yet, but it's going to be, have to be a lot higher than it is right now. And I think we need to start having, finally putting some accountability in here. The differential masking based on uh, an attendance based on your vaccination status. So if you're not going to wear a vaccine, well, then maybe you can't go to the restaurant. Maybe you can't get on the airplane. Maybe you're going to have to be a wear a mask. So the people who should be able to take off the mask first are those who are vaccinated. And those who aren't should have to wait longer. If you want to make your own personal decision, fine. But you need to pay, pay for the consequences of your own decision, not the rest of us. We also need adequate surveillance testing in place. Those numbers that I showed, those are probably an under, underestimate because we don't have adequate testing right now. And we need to start being proactive. What's most frustrating to me is that we can actually predict some of these things ahead. And some of us, of course, have for the last few weeks or months. We need to be proactive and quit waiting for a crisis to make a decision so we can prevent this in the next time. So I think we can get past some of this stuff, but we need people actually running by the numbers and we need the state to actually help us instead of hinder us. So as you can still tell, a bit frustrated today, but it, you know, it is what it is. So hopefully this is helpful to you. Here's what I do for a living. Disclaimer, these are my opinions, not necessarily everybody here. Uh, but, you know, at least in the medical community, everybody's pretty much behind this, and it's really 99 to 1.